This episode of Fishing Gurus is in association with Shimano Commercial Rod. Previously on Fishing Gurus. As two angling disciplines collided, specimen carp anglers against commercial carp fishing gurus, we were guaranteed fireworks and boy did we get them. The underdogs Clark and Dove burst into an early lead, but just as an upset appeared over the horizon, angling giant Steve Winger pulled out a fierce and performance to quite simply kick the carp boys into touch. With partner Bones adding to the tally, Winger looks set to once again stamp his mark on this match. With £178 to pull back, can they possibly do it? Hello and welcome to Fishing Gurus. I'm Wendy Lithgow and you're joining me at Gold Valley Lakes. We're here for our final in the Carp V's commercial carp match and I'm joined here by the carp lads who yesterday had a complete spanking. 178 pound down they've got some real work to do today think you can do it lads well we think we can do it whether we do in reality go. we're yeah. gonna give it a good go but they're so good at it especially steve like yesterday it was just amazing to watch him what he does with the pellets and that um we've got a lot to learn from them we have today so we change what we're doing so so you've had a night to think on it what's the plan for today well we've had a total change in tactics i'm going to start using the pellets because the lads were catching on those yesterday um, what pellets are you going for, Lars? I've got a mixture of pellets. I've got uh, marine halibut, super marines, premiums, and some little cell boilies. Uh, much bigger particles than what we were using yesterday. Um, I fed the swim to start with with a bit of hemp, yeah. just on its own, and then um, I've been feeding little and often with using the spod. Yeah, you've changed that, haven't you, from yesterday? Yeah, I've taped it up because these are, these baits are very light. When I put it in there, I can add just add some water to it to get it out to the island. Right, so is that just for ease of casting? Ease of casting, right. yeah. yeah okay. Get it out just with a normal carp rod rather than a spod rod. And then uh, the only other thing I've changed is uh, I've got a pellet on the hook. So I'm going to start fishing with that to start with. So no boilies today? No then. boilies to start with, but we'll see what happens. Uh, chop and change as we go. Right. Okay, how about you, Tom? Um, similar to Damien, I'm fishing with bigger particles today as well. Um, but I've seen Steve now, it's going to be fishing with the pellet waggler today. Um, by which they, they pulp pellets out constantly and sort of draw the fish up in the water. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm going to try and do, but fishing it from the opposite bottom of, from the bottom of the lake with a zig rig. So what's this zig rig then? Um, basically it's a floating bait on a, on a long hook link. This one's four foot. Okay. Um, the lake's about six foot deep, so probably two foot below the surface. Um, and a bit of cork that looks like a pellet. Right, so, so what, how do you do that up. then? Is that just stamped out or what? What's... Um, no, I've just, I've just hair rigged it on with a normal knotless knot, um, a size 12 hook and a bit of cork that looks like a pellet, so... Right, so no bait on there whatsoever? No, no no bait, no oh, real right. bait anyway, just cork. Cool. So you've got the margins as well, are you going to be... Yeah, I'm going to be doing the same, I'm going to be pulting, like Steve was yesterday, basically I'm copying Steve. Right. Um, but I'm going to be pulting down to my left, um, to the margin, and just fishing on the bottom, similar to Damien. So hopefully you should pick up some bigger fish then? Let's hope, yeah, not yeah. three and four pounders. Well, you've definitely got some ground to pull, so, you know, I think I better leave you to it, and, you know, don't give up, because it's not over till that fat lady sings. Cheers, man. <laughs> First fishing match, Tom? Yeah, I'm not being funny. I'd literally just put, I hadn't even put the alarm on and it went straight away. It's on the zig, so I'd been popping pellets for about half an hour before um, and it went straight away. So It's only been a few minutes, yeah, so. But you remember, we started like yeah, this yesterday, so I'm not going to get too excited. How big is it? It's only small, about four or five pounds, I think. Oh, it's but good. It's a start, the it's a start. Get the sling in, Ali. Baddie for Tom. Four and a half. 
being an adopted northerner, Wend, I'll give that £4.7. Oh, you are stingy. <laughs> Four seven, Tom. Well, this is a familiar sight. The baggy machine's in again. Yeah, it's second cast. I've had to change tactics a bit today because obviously I haven't got the sort of end peg advantage I had yesterday. So I'm just pinging uh, 11 mil pellets two thirds of the way towards the rope, dropping the pellet method over the top, second cast. Mound it's gone and we've got a decent carp on but nothing like some of the fish we caught yesterday but at least we're off the mark hopefully. Well Tom's just had a four pound or so. I think this will cancel out Tom's four pounder oh, but okay. not by much. So not a doubles of yesterday? No and I think we might get some big fish later on the pellet waggler but I think on the method chucking in open water the fish will be a bit smaller but it's just a case of sort of keeping our lead and we've got a massive lead so providing we have a half decent day they shouldn't be able to catch up. Yeah, 178 pounds, quite a massive amount to catch up. Well, I've it? lost some big leads in matches before, but nothing on that sort of scale. It's a nice little mirror. You did have the advantage of choosing the pegs today, though. Yeah, we've, we, to be fair, I think we have played fair, if you excuse the pun. There we go. As in, like, well done, we've, Steve. we've given them the end peg advantage and we've gone for the more middle of the lake, hoping later on when the sun comes out, we're going to have a few on the pellet waggler. Because it would know, just be nice to catch a few on a different method. And as we say, we've got a massive lead. So it puts us in quite a luxurious position, so to speak. But you can't rest on your laurels. No, definitely not. You know, where particularly Tom's spot, if it, they go in the long margin to his left, you know what I mean? He could build a big weight really yeah. quickly. So he, he could repeat what you did yesterday. Well, let's hope not, but well, he could. They have got the luxury of two rods as well. Exactly. So. So let's <laughs> two get this, at a time. Let's get this one on the yeah. scales. There we are, sir. <sighs> Well, Steve just had one in your in now, Alex. Yeah, first bite of the day for me. What's this on? This is actually on the pellet method, adopting right. a similar approach to Steve. But I've got a, a shallow water island chuck over there, and that's where I've just had this bite. Feeling confident? Well, yeah, I mean, it's early days, we've both had a fish each. That wind's so cold, it's though. It's cold, isn't it? It might scupper our, pran uh, our plans for later, hopefully not. Does it feel much size? Yeah, it feels a decent fish. I've had a few liners just casting over there, a few little indications on the rod and then just a bite. Are you using the um, pellets on the hook as well or? This one's on a uh, banded hard 8mm. Right. But I'll swap and change throughout the day. Um, you know, just contrast the, contrast the feed baits and um, just see what works best. So how do you know when to go into the, the pellet um, waggler? What I'll do is I'll, is I'll keep keep feeding it while we're fishing this line. It's a nice fish that Alex. Yeah, it's a nice one. I'll, I'll keep feeding it while I'm fishing this line, maybe look, you know, to see if we see any swells of feeding fish. Yeah. I doubt that'll be the case today because it's quite cold. It's we might, yeah, we it's might have to fish quite deep, but we'll look out for signs and go from there. Yeah, brilliant. Hold up, what's this? Clark and Dove on a rampage. Looks like you're in a bit of trouble here. Yeah. There's one on this rod. Well done. I'd like to work, but I can't. I oh, know. He's around the island, I think, this one. Difficulties with fishing two rods. But yeah, on a match venue like this, we're getting quite we're getting bites every five minutes now, so it seems to be a bit more regular than them guys. Yeah, they're just sat there stationary at the moment. That's what happened yesterday, though. So we're more than wary that they could uh, catch up in the week in the uh, afternoon. So do you think Alex has made a bit of a faux pas with the swim choice? Well, he might have done. I think he uh, he likes the glory rather than the actual fishing, trying to get it right under that island. Uh, I know Steve wanted to come down here, so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, see I what, think Steve will be having words with him later anyway. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to speak too soon. So that's actually the first double take we've seen you have, isn't it? It is, so yeah. yeah. We were expecting more yesterday, but just a take would have been good, I yeah. think. A bit of a nightmare with two. When, you, when your partner can't help you. Jesus. <laughs> well done. All 
change today. These two are in the lead now. Both got fish on, but they've got massive ground to make up. Can they do it? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. This episode of Fishing Gurus is in association with Shimano Commercial Rod. So lads, they're clawing it back. Only £63 in it now. What's going on? Not a lot, I think, is the operative word. I think the swim choice has massively backfired on us. And who was that who made that final decision? Uh, I'm not naming any names, <laughs> but he stood Alex. on my left. It's uh, head in hands at the minute, just uh, trying to rack our brains what to do. So what's we going on here? We've got to change the tactics then. Well, if you can't beat them, join them. I think that's about the only thing I can say. I've just switched to what I call like carp angler style zig rig. Little white pop-up, 10 mil pop-up, probably about two and a half foot off the bottom. Just casting it out similar to what Tom and Damo were doing and then just leaving it out there. So nice and simple. So how, yeah. how are you feeding that then, Steve? Just exactly the same as they are, firing 11 mils over the top. Oh, firing 11 mils over the top. Alex, you're certainly a disability today. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, it's I, not I, very I feel annoying. as I'm fishing on my own. There's nothing, there's no, nothing like a bit of team spirit, eh? <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to say, we've changed, Steve's changed tactics, he's catching on a zig. I'm now fishing a straight lead and pellet over where I've been firing pellets, so I was hoping to catch on the pellet wag. I had one bite on the pellet wag, one fish. It's just, we're getting no signs or indications, you know, there doesn't seem to be many, many fish in front of us. Yeah, it's, it's, Which it seems is, to be completely different halves it's, here. It's giving us little to go on. I mean, I did start off by the island. I can't get a bite there, keep getting snagged all the time. Um, can't get many signs. So I was actually just about to, unclip and fish the rope with a small PVA bag. Right. Are you not going to try the zigs then? Oh, I'm going to do that, see how Steve gets on, and then both swap if one of us starts catching. Brilliant. We've got some serious catching up to <laughs> Definitely. do. Definitely. So is this something you do quite often, Steve? It's, the it's more of a winter tactic. Normally I've had to catch on the pellet wag, but there isn't enough fish out there at the minute to catch on the waggler, so it's a case. It's easier to chuck out like a zig, popped up sort of that far bottom, just leave it at that depth and just keep pinging pellets. And if I start getting a lot of bites on this, then I can pick the waggler up. But at the minute, I think the only chance we've got to get him back in it is probably the waggler, but it's just a case of trying to put a little bit of weight in the net until the fish turn up. This is kind of a reverse kind of tactic, isn't it, to the pellet waggler, the zig rig? Yeah, it, it is. You know, normally the pellet waggler works really well because of the fact your hook bait's dropping slowly through the water, so you're covering a lot of depths, whereas with this zig, I'm anchoring a bait, say, like two and a half foot off bottom, so it doesn't look particularly natural, but it's working for Damien and Tom, so, you know what I mean? can't beat them, join them. Yeah, well they've definitely switched around because they saw that the pellets worked for you yesterday and they're fishing on the pellets today, so. Well, we got no pellets left to feed, other. they've had them all. Yeah, they keep <laughs> nicking them off you. Well, I think you might be a bit more use on your box, Alex, now, so. Don't know if you want to get back I to your I, I don't know if I'd agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get back. <laughs> Another one on then? Yeah, it's been a bit slow and I was getting fairly worried at one point when they started to really, well, em em look like they were emptying yeah, the lake they were, up there. Well, they were getting two at once at one point. Exactly, so. so but l luckily it looks like they've slowed up. And although myself and Alex aren't exactly bagging, we're sort of holding the gap. You're still picking a few up. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think if, if they have another good hour, it could really like set up a, a tense finale, so to speak. Do you think you can weather it out? I think, providing they don't have, if they have another hour like they had at the start, Unless our swims pick up massively, I think it could go right down to the wire, which I never would have thought this morning because I didn't think we could lose a lead that big. Yeah, it was but it looked like we could quite easily. It was some gap. Exactly, yeah. Well, I, mean, I hope you win for Alex's sake, because if not... <laughs> I hope we win for our reputation's sake. <laughs> I think Alex might be um, going in for picking the swim. Alex has got a few things to answer for, <laughs> and none of them are very good. Yeah, he's, he's not very happy. He's never very happy, and he won't be very happy when I finished with him after the match. <laughs> I think it might be the biggest fish I've had today. If it's a nice double, it'll just put another £10 in between us. Let's have a look. It's on a zig again, you know what I mean? To be honest, I think I've had over half my fish just fishing zig, so as much as obviously match tactics are great, you can learn a lot from the specimen guys. Yeah, it is mad how sort of you've both swapped over, mirroring each other, isn't it, today? It's a nice fish. Nice fish. Yeah, it's, I've just had to, you know, just to try and keep in touch. And that's the biggest one I've had today. Why do you think it is, Steve, that match anglers don't use zigs? 
They go for more like the pellet waggler style of fishing. I don't really know, to be honest. I think it's like, a lot of people, it's not a widely renowned tactic. We do tend to fish a lot in the uh, winter with like popped up bread, popped up boilies, but in the summer we tend just to stick to pellet wag when today's proven that zigs I mean, can be equally effective, if not better, on the day. Why do you think that has worked so well today? And I think, not the, the I think it's the case, the fish don't want to be, the, the weather's still cold, the fish don't want to be on the bottom, so they're just cruising around up in the water at a set level, and the beauty of a zig is you can put a bait there and just leave it, whereas with a pellet waggler it's affected by the wind, the tow. It's moving. Yeah, so you've almost got a better presentation with a zig. Yeah, it's definitely worked today. So we can come out. Zigs are definitely working there. Oh, it's one a chuck. Yeah. You did have one off the island as well, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, one off the island, and now they, they, they seem to have turned up again. Um, we had about an hour, hour and a half of inactivity, and the fish have come back in the swim. Tom's constantly feeding, and my rods are just going off every five minutes. You've not had a chance to feed again yet, have you? No, not, not at all, no. I mean, there's five in the net, this is number six. It definitely seems like a method of the day. I mean, Steve's sort of changed over to carp tactics and he's fishing a, a zig with a little mini pop-up on. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a method that the match anglers could actually employ. You know, it's all scaled down stuff. Um, it's so effective on most lakes, especially in the spring, early summer. Just get, they're just uh, easy to catch on it. Mm. You just get the depth right. Well, that's it. How do you decide on the depth? Well, we... Because we're, we're kind of... Uh, feeding sinking pellets to sort of mimic what Steve was doing. So we're fishing off the bottom, probably three feet from the surface, and as the bait comes down, the fish are coming in and we're catching them like that. But, I mean, what we normally do for, you know, zig fishing, we fish with a sloppy mix and a spod and fish it so like that. So it's just a lot of cloud lot around of cloud, it, fish a lot of bait. Bombing around and that sort of thing. Brilliant. Well, get that in. I think it's about time we have a look at these zig rigs in more detail. Yeah, cool. Damien, you buzzer boys have been leading the way today with these zig rigs. Yeah. I know Steve's been trying to copy you and he's had a few <coughs> fish on him, but yours are set up obviously very carpy. So I know there's a few different things we've not seen here before, like the way that the lead's set up. And yeah. Well, just talk us through it a bit. This is a standard carp rig, really. This is what I had on yesterday. But you've got some anti tangle tube there, which protects the fish um, from line cuts. But an anti tangle tail rubber, and then lead fits on a lead clip. But we're fishing it running because the fishery rule. Right. Okay. And then the hook link is just basically, it's uh, engaged, which is a match hook link, a nine pound break and strain. Um, and at the end of that, we've got a little tiny hook, which we use for mixer fishing. A uh, little tiny barbless hook, really short hair, with a little bit of cork on there, which imitates a pellet. So there's no bait at all, no, no attraction there? No, just... no, we're fooling them because we're feeding pellets over the top of them. So it's just a very visual thing? I don't know if it's that visual, because the water's quite cloudy, but it sort of imitates a pellet. That's right. what we're trying to do. Um, they do tangle, so what we do is we use one of these. It's a, a nugget, which you get in most tackle it's shops. It's like what's it? It's like what's it? It's what they use in packaging. And they're biodegradable. Biodegradable. All you do is you lick them, and then just put it around the hook. And that just goes to nothing. There's nothing then. Yeah, it just yeah, it goes to nothing. But what it does, it gives gives it the uh, the cast and resistance, so it keeps the the hook away from the line lands on the surface, it floats, it's buoyant anyway, and it just stops any tangles. And does that dissolve pretty quickly? Pretty quickly, yeah, probably. Well, on impact, it's quite, you know, it's coming off anyway, so, um, yeah, within a couple of minutes, it's off. Brilliant. Well, that's interesting stuff, then. Cheers for that. They've now closed it down to 27. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling particularly good. <laughs> and I'm a portion, a large proportion of the blame at the angle on the next peg. And I'm, my back's now hurting for carrying it for two days, and it's just, well, it's just not happening for us. <laughs> What do you think? Is there anything you can do now to pull it out of the bag? Well, I'm trying to up the feed, but it's just nothing's really happening. I'm just, and I'm just watching the clock and praying for time. Well, they're having double takes now, I know. double double figure fish. I, I just feel as I'm fishing on my own. So better go and have a word with Alex and see if he's got any more excuses. Alex, it seems like the pep talk worked. Well, I've managed to claw one back at least to help increase the difference in the weight between the teams. 
just a quick bite on the pellet waggler. Just kept, just keep feeding the pellets, but it's only an odd bite. It's whether we can hang on. It's pretty nail biting at the minute. Well, there's about well 15 pounds between you, I think. So not a lot. So you, you and Steve just need to pick the odd fish up. Yeah. Well, this one's the good fish on the pellet waggler. If we can catch them, that's the diff that's the thing though. That's what's proving difficult today. Actually catching them. Do you think this is just a one out of the blue, or do you think there's a few out there now? Well, I've had. I think three or four carp on the pellet wagger and they've just been one odd ones, you know, that have just shown up. Is this any size? Um, yeah, it's a decent fish, I think. Just again, just can't catch shallow though, still sort of three or four foot deep, you know. I think you really need to actually get some in the net now, because if you don't, Steve is going to throttle you. <laughs> what an unbelievable comeback. They've pulled it back to just a £25 deficit. This was not in the script. Truly a ding-dong battle. Just as it looked like Ringer and Bones had weathered the storm, Dove and Clark forced themselves back into the match. You simply can't keep these guys down. the match it has been incredibly close let's get the lads together and see what the results are well it really has been a match of two halves day one saw Steve and Alex run away with a 178 pound lead but today the carp lads have clawed it back with over 300 pounds worth of fish now the ultimate question is have you won it and I'm pleased to say you managed to do it. Well, <laughs> you, Alex, to so say you, Steve, managed to do it and you won it with over £10. So well done, lads. I think that was Alex's one Commiserations. Bit. But I think what we have learned is that we can definitely learn quite a bit from you guys with the old zig rigs and everything. And I think, well, Steve, if you hadn't pulled it out of the bag yesterday with all them doubles, it might have been a different story. So... <laughs> <laughs> It's been an amazing couple of days, over 120 fish caught. Some have caught considerably more than others, but we've all enjoyed it and I hope you have too. See you on the bank soon. This episode of Fishing Gurus is in association with Shimano Commercial Rods.